Hello everybody, good afternoon, welcome to That's Football, I'm Mark Goldbridge and it's the beginning of Super Sunday. I hope you're ready, I hope you've had lots of chocolate, a um, bit of a sugar rush maybe. Uh, if you can't eat chocolate, um, respect by the way, um, you know, some people can't, allergic, other reasons. But if you are, let us know what you're enjoying. Um, uh, we've lost an hour today as well, rest in peace. Uh, what, what should be... 10 to 12 is actually 10 to 1 in the UK. Um, yeah, that was a that was a mistake playing um, Girth and Turf till about 1 o'clock this morning because really it was 2 o'clock. Um, anyway, I uh, hope you're doing very, very well. Massive, massive Sunday. Of course, Man City Arsenal is the big one. Uh, this is the prelude. It's Liverpool against Brighton, who, uh, let's be honest, could put a thorn in the side of a title race. It's a funny old season and you just never know what's going to happen, do you? Also, I'm going to be opening up Agony Bridge. Um, yesterday, we had a few uh, relationship conversations. We were talking about the funniest way you've been dumped or you've dumped somebody. Um, had some interesting responses to that, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment. But uh, good to have you. Hope you're all doing very, very well. Um, Liverpool team, just to get straight into it. Kelleher still in goal. Alisson still injured. Bradley, uh, Trent still injured. Kwanzaa, Van Dijk and Gomez. McAllister, Endo and Savozlai. Salah, Nunez and Diaz. That front six is looking good for Liverpool, isn't it? Bench-wise, Canate's there. Gakpo's there. Elliot's there. Gravenberg is there. Um, so they've got options on the bench. Um Brighton, Verbruggen, Veltman, Dunk, Van Heck, Lamptey, Estebanan, Beliba, Gross, Adingra, Moda, and Welbeck. Um, look, I think they've they've got a good team, um, Brighton, and I, I think they actually have got a good bench as well. Uh, I know they've had their injury problems, but I think it's because a lot of people don't actually know Brighton players a lot of the time. I actually think that they're underperforming, Brighton. That's my my strong opinion on it. So yeah, I, I think that they that they could come. Um, they're always a good team to watch. Um, De Zerbi potentially on trial for the Liverpool job, maybe the Manchester United job, who knows. Uh, Philip Sutton is a legend. He's just gifted five memberships. Good to see some more badges in the chat. Uh, love that. Uh, thank you very much to Philip. Uh, absolute legend there. An Easter treat, gifting memberships. Gift, gift to your community. Well done, Philip. Lovely little present there. Cairo, welcome to Members Club as well. Get your badge in. Reese Powell says, do you think if Arsenal win today, City are out of the title race? Yes. I think it's absolutely massive. Um, I, I, you know what? You can clip it. You can do what you believe or like. I'm an unashamed Arsenal fan today. I've never been this in my life, but uh, there will be passion on the half past four uh, stream because I will be uh, Arsenal for this game. There's, 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 there's no there's no two ways about it. Uh, I will be. The volume was low again. I think it's whenever I've been on Discord. I figured it out now. Whenever I play Girth and Turf and I go on Discord, it messes up with my audio settings, which is uh, which is weird. Uh, but it's sorted now. Thank you very much. Uh, Anne says, he's broke up with his girlfriend by text. It's much worse. Um, you coward. You're an absolute coward. You broke up with your girlfriend by text. I've got no respect. I've got no respect for the youth today. You can't break up with people by text. I bet you weren't having a hand job by text. I bet you weren't kissing by text. I bet you weren't having it off by text. If, you, if, if you're going to have a relationship that's real and involves physical uh, elation, then you've got to physically dump them. And that doesn't mean get physical. It means be there physically. You're dumped. I'm real. I'm not AI. Um... Come on, you've disappointed me there. You can't be do you can't be dumping people by text. That's 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 low. That that is low. I've not. I didn't do it by text. Did it by phone, like verbal. It is also cowardly, and I feel guilty about it. Yes, definitely, definitely do. Um, uh, funnily enough, um, look, the game is not that far away. Seven minutes. I'm going to go with a Liverpool win. Um, I think they'll win three or four nil, actually. I think it might be another beating for De Zerbi. But um, Sean Dyche's thoughts on being under pressure, says Paul. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. But with regards to Liverpool, I think they'll win this quite comfortably. They need to. Um, obviously, uh, a disappointing loss in the cup before the international break to Manchester United. But when you look at the league table... They are top of the tree at the moment and, uh, well, they're, they're joint top of the tree at the moment. But a win just gives them a little bit of breathing space ahead of that Arsenal-Man City game. Of course, it's a big week in the Premier League. We'll talk about those fixtures a little bit later. Three games in a week. Of course, Man Manchester United play Liverpool uh, a week today at this time. Or half past three, actually. But uh, yesterday we were talking about um, funny ways that you've dumped somebody or you've been dumped. 
Um, I've had a couple of emails come in since last night. Uh, somebody really um, appreciated it and was said thank you. You know, they were dreading being dumped, but the advice to fake it if you do get dumped and just say it's probably for the best. I've been looking at a lot of porn because you don't satisfy me physically anymore is a great comeback to being dumped. Um, that was a that was a real you know positive email from somebody who's worried that they might get dumped, but they've got it in their arsenal now. Um, but unfortunately, we had an email from somebody who did it uh, to see what it was like to say that to their current relationship, which they didn't want to end. So last night they said that um, they just tried it out on their girlfriend of three years um, and said, um, I'm thinking about breaking up with you because you don't satisfy me much and I'm spending a lot of time on you porn. Um, they've moved out. So don't do it unless it's the end of a relationship because I didn't put the disclaimer in yesterday. It will be a relationship ender. Only do it if the relationship's ending. If you say it in a relationship, you are you will end the relationship. I mean, there's no coming back from that. I find you physically repulsive, so I'm spending a lot more time looking at porn. Is not going to ever be much of a comeback from that. It really is the last throw of the dice to get a late goal winner. You get dumped, and then you say, great move. I actually agree with you. I don't find you attractive anymore. I've been spending a lot more time on you porn for the last month. See you later cry behind the door but throw the winner in players are coming out um anyway uh big game uh sean dyke's thoughts on being under pressure says poor matt well at the end of the day we don't really know what's going on um one minute we've got 30 points the next we've got 21 you know wake up tomorrow we've lost to bournemouth but we might wake up with another three points who knows what the easter bunny's gonna bring i'm hoping for a crunchy uh maybe a mars bar and, uh, you know, if I'm really lucky, uh, a bit of a Thornton's one dark chocolate with uh, toffee bits in it. But uh, you just don't know at Goodison this year because uh, I, I wake up and I've lost some points. I wake up and I've got some points back. I'm confused. Um, people are telling me you can't have any more points given back to you. Um, they can only get taken away. But, you know, football's crazy. You can't predict it. Um, you know, Fulham, a 3-1 down to Sheffield United. Goal gets disallowed. They end up 3-3. Um, so people tell me we can't have any more points back, but it's a funny old game, Jim. You, you just don't know what's going to happen tomorrow when you wake up. Um, there might be an Easter egg there. There might be a dildo there. Um, there might be three points there. So, uh, look, at the end of the day, the lads are working hard for the badge, and uh, we, we, we've just got to keep going, you know, keep going, and uh, and hopefully um, um, things will turn around. But, you know, you've got to be pretty shit to, to get relegated below Burnley and, 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 and Sheffield United and... Uh, I think Luton are a toothless tiger, to be honest. They've still got claws, but they're never going to bite you. Um, anyway, enjoy Easter, and um, let's see what tomorrow brings. Um, Corbin says, imagine mocking Sean Dyke, who's, more, who's miles better than Ten Hag. Corbin, imagine having zero personality and banter and getting upset about a bit of a joke. Klopp used that breakup line on Liverpool, says Killen. Uh, Hessens gifted a membership and Leroy Cooper says Cole Palmer is the most informed under 21 and he needs to go to the Euros. Leroy, you've got my vote. You've got my vote. I completely agree. I think Cole Palmer has been a revelation this season and uh, it's been a bit of a slow burner for me. I didn't want to jump on the hype train, but I absolutely agree with you. Absolutely. Um, poor old Corbin. Fancy not getting banter. So it, maybe it's illegal in his house. Uh, but bore off, Corbin, says James. Yeah, bore off. I like that saying. Deserby's very overrated, says Charlie. I agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel. And of course, we are about to watch this game of football here. But I'm opening up Agony Bridge. If you've got any issues you want me to try and solve, we are a community. And I realise I am very good and experienced at most things. Animal problems, relationship problems, food problems. Get involved. Um, I'm, I, I, if I can't help you, someone in the chat will. So uh, there you go. Harry Bain on Leverkusen winning the league, says Nelly. Um, I, I'll see if I can get Harry Bain on the phone later. Ever done role play before, Mark, says Lil. Nah. Nah, no. I mean, that's an honest answer there. I don't see the point. I had a nightmare once where the missus was saying to me, 
act like Mark Goldbridge in the bedroom. And I was just, I was going, get in, get in. I was just, it was, it was cringe. It was really, really cringe. Um, Mark, take a look at Brighton's defence and compare to United's, says Casper. Um, what do you mean? Uh, I think Brighton's defence is quite good, isn't it? Yeah. Strong start to the stream, definitely. Well done, everybody. Get involved. Um, happy Easter, Mark, says Jeff. Yeah, let us know. Um, I, my tactic at Easter, I mean, I haven't done it for years. Uh, the only chocolate I've had in my mouth today is uh, about a handful of peanut M&Ms, which are actually quite okay because you get a bit of peanut there. But um, traditionally, Young Bridge would uh, wake up on Easter morning, um, communicate with the siblings, brothers and sisters, uh, and uncles and nephews and everything. We'd always have a big get together. And uh, basically I couldn't stand the egg. So you've got to strike while the iron's hot. You get in there, you go to your sister. She's got a double decker. You go, I'll give you my whole Mars egg for you, both your double deckers deal. Because she's looking at the size of the egg. She's not thinking it's hollow. I would end up by about midday on East, on Easter Sunday with just loads of chocolate bars and no eggs. And then Literally within hours, they'd be saying, oh, I've been scammed. And I'd go, you have, you have. You've got loads of eggs, but you've got no bars. And I've got loads of them. Um, Ronaldo, uh, who would win between a koala bear and a sloth, says Deeper. I mean, I, I don't know, really. Uh, koala bears are quite uh, quicker, but sloths are, are bigger. Right, we're ready to go here. Brighton start it off. There we go. There we go. The start of Super Sunday. Arsenal versus City prediction, says Tom. I think City are going to win, but I'm using all my jinx powers. So I, I don't want City to win, obviously. I want uh, I want Arsenal to win. Uh, we're on the road to 125,000 subscribers today. Please do subscribe. We're about 300 away. Get involved with the show. We're live all the way through until about half six tonight um, because uh, Arsenal kick off against City at half past four. There'll be a little brief interlude for drinks and toilet breaks and then we'll be live uh, straight after this one for that game as well um yeah please do subscribe bottom right hand corner brighton should be able to move the ball around fine uh, they've had some beatings this season luton away uh fulham away and uh, roma away so all this all this calendar year actually so that they they, they are vulnerable brighton but uh of course, it still stands what I said as well. We've had now eight Premier League games this weekend. Nobody's won away from home. Goldbridge theory is, after an international break, it's very, very hard to win away. Why? Rhythm. Teams are never in rhythm after the international break. So home advantage becomes massive when two teams collide who haven't got any rhythm. But Brighton are on the attack early here. Early goal! It's a goal! It is a goal! It's Danny Welbeck for Brighton! Well, 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 well. Knock me down with an Easter egg because that was an absolute treat. Danny Welbeck scores at Anfield. The former Manchester United player has scored in the first ten, two minutes here. And Jurgen Klopp's got a smile on his face. Inside, he will not be happy. It's like watching your missus doing something with somebody else that she wants to do and you're pretending you like it and inside you're dying. So you put a smile on your face because that is what's happening to Jurgen Klopp here. He's absolutely furious. Brighton have carved them open. It's Easter, not Christmas, but like a Christmas turkey, Brighton have carved them open. Danny Welbeck comes to me on the edge of the box. Lovely technique. Keller has not saving that. Liverpool sloppy at the back. Van Dijk actually should do better. Where's the midfield for Liverpool as well? I'll tell you what, Danny Welbeck's still got a lot to do there on the half volley. Edge of the box, lovely technique. 1-0 to Brighton. Bloody hell. Also formerly Arsenal player, says Lee, as well. Yes, correct. There we go. 1-0, well, there we go. What can you see? Brighton starting off here. bringing the game to Liverpool. This is why I think City will win the league. City is just the sort of team that just won't uh, won't slip up, I don't think.
Interesting. Very interesting. Well, get in the chat. What are your thoughts? Is it a slow start? 1-0 down. Klopp sponsored by Colgate with those teeth, says Leroy Cooper. If you've just tuned in a little bit late, I'm sure some of you are actually... I know a couple of mates, actually, who are planning on phone under the table reviewing today. Um, I wish I could just make their phone shout out because uh, we all know that there's a lot of people doing that. But SD Plays has just tuned in. Yeah, if you tune in a little bit late, Liverpool are losing 1-0 here and Brighton have started off really well. I did say rest defence on my recent Super Chat, says Casper. But I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, Casper. I did say rest defence on my recent Super Chat. What, what, does he, what do you mean by rest defence? Uh, would you rather Southgate as United manager or... Don't even know what that means, Jimmy. Mark, did you watch that comedy special last night? Says Mr. What, Man United? <laughs> um, Liverpool on the attack now with Diaz. Brighton got a good shape here at the moment. Of course, Alexi McAllister up against his former club. Why are people bringing Manchester United into it? It's not, Man it's not a Manchester United day. Oh! I thought that might be a penalty then. Nunez was pulled down in the box. Have a look at this. Not, not enough. No, not enough for me. Not enough for me. Not enough for me. Having said that, if it was a penalty at Chelsea, it was a penalty there. Uh, City also concede early goals and then make comeback so Liverpool could do something similar. Um... It was that, that was more of a penalty than the Mudrick one. I will say that. Neither are a penalty for me, but it was more of a penalty. Uh, Corrupt says, what did you get for Easter? Um, I, I didn't get anything really. I, I'm not really bothered. Because when you've got kids, you can just eat their chocolate eggs. So you don't need any of your own. Uh, Jeff, Jeff says uh, City also concede early goals and then make a comeback so Liverpool could do something similar. I'd still say Liverpool are favourites, yeah. Nice ball into Nunez. He needs to cut that back. Good defending by Brighton. Edge of the box. You can score You can, you can can score too early as well when you go to the Etihad, when you go to Anfield, when you go to the Emirates. You can, there's such a thing as scoring too early. We saw it with Luton yesterday. I think they scored too early against Spurs as well. Um, your game plan when you score early away from home, it can be quite detrimental because you're suddenly just thinking about holding on and it's a long way to hold on. There's a good time to score as an away team and it's not normally in the first five minutes. Uh, that foul on Nunez was the same as Mudrick's as Connor. I think it's more of a foul. Lovely play down the wing here. Brighton. Could be two. Cross came in. Um... I had a United stand jump for my birthday, says Jimmy. Look at you, they're good quality. Nice ball out to Salah. How's he, how fits he now after two weeks? Didn't look particularly fit at Old Trafford. But uh, he's on the charge here again. Liverpool just probing. Nunez. I tell you what, I do really like this time of year. I always prefer autumn to Christmas for football, but I actually quite like Easter to summer when there's an international tournament. The changing of the weather, the business end. Um, I do like it, apart from the fact that I think City will fucking win. Uh, Isaac in the Sky says, Hi Mark, today my pet fish Barry just committed adultery. What do I do? I think fish by their very... I like this. Bring in your problems. I'm more than happy to answer them. 
Agony Bridge. Um, I think fish are serial shaggers anyway. Good shot by Salah just wide. Uh, fish are unfaithful little twats. They, they have no sympathy. Don't feel guilty about eating a tuna or a salmon. Because if you were another salmon and you were married to that salmon... It shags all over the place. They are they are not relationship specimens, uh, species. They uh, they basically shag anything. So uh, they don't have the principles of a human or a brain. Um, goldfish are the worst, says T Bliss. Yeah. You know, some people take their uh, well, actually. I don't want to get onto this because I might upset people, but uh, I watched a program once about a vet and um, somebody came in to the vet with a pet mouse, right? And it had um, surgery. Like, it, I can't remember what it was. I don't think it was open heart surgery, but it was some sort of surgery. And I was just like, why? It's a mouse. And the, they were waiting in the waiting room, devastated. Like, it could have been a bloody family relative for all you knew. Then they, they operated on a mouse. Tiny little thing. Um, it lived. I mean, I, I, I'll admit, I, I, I fell into the drama. I wanted it to live. But I just thought, actually, surely, it gets to a point with an animal where the couple of hundred quid you're spending on it really isn't worth it. Plenty more mice in the sea. What, what's the cutoff point? Cats, I get it. Dogs, I get it. Rabbits, you know. And it is a size thing. It is a size thing. At what size does an animal become not worth actually spending money on vet fees? I don't mind spending it on feet, on, you know, injections. But, you know, if I take my rabbit to the to the, to the vet and he says, he's, you know, he's getting a bit old, could probably do with a pacemaker or a new hip. I'm sort of like going, he's had a good innings. He would rather that money went towards a summer holiday than a new hip. It's a bit like age. My mate said to me, it gets to a point where somebody is of a certain age where it's a real waste on the NHS um, resources to operate and be giving open heart surgery and, you know, new hips to people over 72. I said, I think that's a bit harsh, mate. Clint Eastwood's in his 90s. Are you saying he can't have open heart surgery? He's got to die. He doesn't need it. I said you've got to do it on a case-by-case -case basis. Some people in their 80s are actually quite switched on. Bradley. I think driving, I would I would be a fan of that. Um there seems to be some th a correlation between old people and slowing down in their car. I mean, I was driving through Solihull the other day and somebody was doing 18 miles an hour consistently through a 30. Over the bar from McAllister. It's almost like the opposite of a, of a teenager. They get a car, they can't go quick enough. Over 80, it's about, can I go slower than a dead rabbit? What if? What about if it's a small dog, says Luke? I genuinely think if it's a dog, do everything you can. Aaron says, your red card yesterday was very... Old. It was, wasn't a red card, mate. Disgusting. Probably cost us promotion as well. Well, Brighton are riding a storm here. Great tackle by McAllister. What a signing he's been. Lovely ball into Salah. Good defending by, is that Estebanan? I think it was. There's going to be a lot of goals in this game. Thoughts on the young England prospect? Yeah, I'm not an idiot, Celadons. I've been streaming like this for years. I don't fall for little silly combinations like Ben and Dover. That foul on Nunez was the same as Modric. Thank you very much. We've read that. Thank you very much for your super chats, by the way. Uh... Some good conversations as well. Happy to have them. Any problems? We've dealt with a with a randy fish. We're asking the question. 
How small should an animal be before you stop paying for big vet fees? I.e. somebody paid for a mouse to have surgery. I thought that was a foul there by McAllister on a Dingra. Yeah, yellow card. Given it. That, ref, that ref's fucking thick, isn't he? The refereeing in this country is a joke. It's a yellow card because he's, he's, he's uh, shoulder barged him. But uh, he's trying to make out. It's an elbow. <laughs> like, understand the fucking rules, ref. There's the sneeze. Oh, I knew that was coming as well. Uh, Alexi McAllister on a yellow card. This could be a bad day for Liverpool at the moment. FPL Fozzie says, what's your thoughts on an insect as a pet? Well, look, actually, I, I used to have a friend at school that um, he used to collect uh, stick insects. Um, feed them. I, don't, I can't remember how, how long they live, but uh, he used to collect stick insects and... Um, He'd let them out in the garden and stuff. Um, he, I didn't stay friends with him for long because I trod on one by accident. But, yeah, they are... Um, insects can be pets. Spiders. How long do stick insects live for? A year. About a year. An adult, insta an adult stick insect measures about seven and a half centimetres uh, and will live for about a year. It's not bad. Ref shit. I don't like this ref either. I don't remember his name. Would you keep a seagull as a pet? I don't think they'd be very happy. Eminem says, if Liverpool win now, would you want Arsenal or City to win later? I want Arsenal to win. I don't want City to win the league. So basically, any anything that stops City winning the league, I'll pretty much jump on board. Uh, I said a spider was an insect, but I wasn't actually thinking. Uh, of course, a spider is not an insect. It's an arachnid. If you watch the uh, office, you'll know that. But uh, Brighton are well organised here. Uh, Mario says, it's easy to say the players have given up on Eric Ten Hag. That's just lazy talking. We mostly always perform like this after an international break, says Mario. What does it, make it, it doesn't make it acceptable, does it? I've been to Stetchford, yeah. Opinion on exotic pets like hippos or, or something. Who has a bloody pit hippo as a pet? Ronan. Salah. Oh, he could have dived there, you know. He really could have dived there. I mean, I've got to say, fair play for staying on your feet because I'd have been Mr. Tumble there. There was a foot hanging out and he could have took a dive and he stayed on his feet. Um, Brighton are doing really well here. They're getting the numbers back. I had a pet magpie for five years and they are one smart creature on the planet, says Raz. Lovely ball into Salah over the bar. He should have crossed it. Should have crossed that. Um, Isaac in the sky says, I'm a City fan, but our style of play is so boring. Bloody hell. That's uh first time we've had an honest City fan on here. And uh, Dowell says, thank you, Mark. Every Sunday that there's a That's Football watch along after United stand on Saturday, it feels like a good therapy session after an awful day. Thanks, Dowell. I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, start bench cell, says Nicholas Cage. Polar bear, hippo, rhino. W what am I doing with them? Keeping them as a pet. Playing them up front. Who's, who, who, would have a, who would win in a fight? Um, I'll, I'll sell a rhino. Um... I think a, I think a hippo would beat a polar bear, Nicolas Cage. So I would start a hippo. Oh, Salah again. I tell you what, the chances are stacking up already. Salah's had about three chances here. 
Uh, Pablo Escobar had them and they escaped, says Ronan. More money than cents. McAllister's gone down here. I didn't see it. City goalkeeper ruled out. It's 58 go. Gross on McAllister. Didn't see it. Uh, Muju says it should be a red. No. No. Neither of them get the ball. Just kicks the foot, kicks the bottom of Gross's foot. Ah, oh, that's not a yellow. That's not a yellow. Fucking hell, that's terrible. Well, this ref's absolute shit. I mean, we're literally booking people now because someone's someone's hurt. If that was the other way around and Gross had gone down, McAllister probably gets sent off. Unbelievable. It will have hurt McAllister because he's kicked the bottom of Gross's foot, but they've both gone for the ball. They've both missed it. It's ridiculous. He's a, this ref's an absolute clown. Tell me his name. He belongs in a fucking circus. Happy Easter to you, Mark, and your family, says Mozza. And happy Easter to everybody else. Hope you're having a good day. There's Danny Welbeck's goal again. Lovely technique. Absolutely lovely. Chops across it. 1-0 Brighton in the first two minutes. James says, fish are friends, not food. I'll tell you what, I went down the pub on Friday night. I had a lovely bit of salmon. Absolutely lovely. Bit of bit of pop choy, bit of sweet potato. Um, I can't remember what it was called with it, but uh, it was nice. David Coot says Jensen. David K something. Uh, Eminem says start bench cell Van Dyke, Amrabat, and Sabliba. What what you put Amrabat in there? I mean, I'm obviously selling him. Uh, who would I go for for Van Dyke over Saliba? I'd still go Van Dyke over Saliba at the moment. Saliba, Saliba, sorry. Offside. Do you think the mighty Solly Holmores are going to go up, says Nate? I think they've got a few injury problems at the moment. And they're stuttering a little bit. Good point against Barnett on Friday, though. What can we do with these crap refs, says Reb? Nothing. It's a dictatorship. They don't listen. They don't care. They all get protected by the dictatorship that is the PGMOL. Uh, we need independent regulation, but the media protects them. I mean, did you watch Match of the Day last night? Did you watch Match of the Day last night? They didn't even really talk about that dodgy penalty um, that Gordon got. We are being manipulated. We are being desensitised and censored from the poor officiating because there's so much money swishing around in the Premier League that... Well, remember when Liverpool's onside goal wasn't given? And on the Saturday... Lots of ex-players who were pundits were going mad. And then 24 hours later, they're all putting tweets out saying, oh, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Do you know what happened there? The powers that be were like, you're paid by us. We need you to get on side with the referees and not call, cause a pile on. And that, that's what happens. I mean, Howard Webb's got his own fucking show on Sky, hasn't he? The worst ref is Simon Hooper, says Eminem. It's a good competition. How's that a foul, but the Doku one wasn't, says Jamie's Gaming Studio. Fabio, thanks for your super chat. Appreciate those. I feel like I'm getting a bit of a cold after that sneeze. Start bench sell, Saka, Foden, Palmer, says Leroy Cooper. I'll start Saka. It's a good one, that one, Leroy Cooper. There'll be a lot of people getting involved in the chat. I'd start Saka, 
I'd bench Foden and I'd sell Palmer, but they're all very, very good players and they're all English. Oh, we were playing a great game down the pub the other day. We'd had a few. Um, we, you know, obviously a lot of what I do on the stream actually happens in real life, uh, especially when I'm with the lads. So there is start bench sales and stuff like that. You can while away a whole evening. It's great. Uh, but towards the end of the night, we started doing our own game. And it was basically crocodile pits, two people who you're throwing in. They're going to get eaten. Don't don't think that they're going to survive. The, the rule is you're kicking them into the crocodile pit or you go in, right? So, for example, James Corden or DiCaprio, who's going in the crocodile pit? Well, easy. We all know who's going in there. Um, but we were doing it with... Like, there was a really good one, actually. I, 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 I said to my mate, I said, right, your wife or your best mate? He was debating it for about five minutes. Pros and cons. You know, we've been together for a long time. We've got kids. You know, we get on quite well. But there's an absolutely no football conversation. Whereas my be best mate, known him all my life. Football chat's great. Um, it, was, it, was, it was really interesting. Uh, it's a good game. Take it. You can use that. Crocodile pit. Two things. Who's going in? You can put yourself in and, and save the two people as well, but that's game over. Obviously. We just call it crocodile pit. You could you could do it with sharks. Polar bears in a in a boxing ring. Whatever. Jig's got a good one. You, you can play Hitler or Putin. Who are you throwing in? Um, I'll just do a double tombstone. Close line. You've got to put Hitler in ahead of Putin, surely. I mean, I don't want to get political, but surely. Surely. I don't like doing it with footballers, though, because they might be bad at football, but they don't deserve to get thrown in a crocodile pit. Like if someone said to me Rashford or Bruno, who's going in the crocodile pit? I'm like, I'm not, I'm not being responsible for that. Can't we just sell them to PSG? Uh, Palmer's had a better season so far than both. Just Dylan, look, Cole Palmer's a fantastic player. There's, 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 there's no, there's no doubt about it. Who did he pick? Ah, uh, well, it, it, his best mate might be watching, and his wife might be watching, but. Uh, he basically said that um, I can't. I can't say. I'll be in trouble. What's what? What goes on in the pub stays on in the pub. His wife's very sensitive as well, so she'd go mad. Oh, goal! Could be offside. No, given Diaz. I thought it was look miles off. I think we look absolutely miles off. I have to see this again. Brighton are definitely appealing for it. With this referee, you never know. Give me a minute. I'll find a way. Just leave me alone. I'll find a way. I'll find a way. I've told you. I can be easily manipulated. Let's have a look. Cross comes in. Out. Oh, he's miles on. Miles on. Yeah, he's miles on and it comes off a Brighton player. That's a goal. 1-1. One, one. He's miles on and it came off a Brighton player anyway. Let's play ball. 1-1. One, one. <laughs> Told you there were goals. Did look miles offside, but he wasn't. He was miles on. I think the Brighton player knocking it on as well would have... Uh, would have made him onside anyway, but he probably would have been offside from the Salah header. But he was onside from the Salah header. It's a goal. It's 1-1 to Liverpool. It's a shame for Brighton because they've had a good start. But as I said, you, there, there is something that, that there is some that, that that saying scoring too early. This could be uh, this could be it.
Gia says, is this a watch along or Mark Goldbridge plays silly games? Oh, shut up, mate. Bore off. What? Didn't you get an Easter egg or something? Bloody hell, you miserable shit. Get out. Get out. I've covered every single goal. And we have a bit of banter and a bit of a chat as well. It's called Real Talk. Oh, we go. Oh, blocked. I thought Brighton had scored again. Start bench cell, 7 10 or 1. What, as a number? I love this. Who to blame? Who would I... I've never been asked this before. Numbers. What's your favourite numbers? We should. We could do a quarterfinal to final. Um, start bench cell, number 7, number 10 or number 1. Hmm. Well, number 7 I'm going to start. Number 10 I'm going to bench. Number 1 I'm going to sell. But if I sell number 1, I'll never be able to count. Start with 2. 29 minutes gone, 1-1 one, one here. Let's have a look, quick look at the stats. Sixty-five percent possession for Liverpool, eight shots to one. Both only had one shot on target, three corners to one. So I think Brighton scored too early. Still a long way to go, but it, it has got that feel to it. Starting eleven of animals, who do you pick? Isaac, I'm not doing that. I that 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 actually went viral on Talk Sport. They they actually had a video of like an animal's top starting eleven. And I, I basic no no problem with talk sport. If it gets your views, fine. I'll always respect that. But I actually pitied the UK. I was like, oh, who gives a shit? Let's what should we do next? It's starting eleven of porn stars. Oh, put Johnny Sins up front because he always scores. At, no, he scores at both ends, though. You'll get a lot of own goals. Um, ridiculous. Who gives a shit about starting 11 of animals? One, it's never going to happen. And two, I couldn't give a shit. I genuinely couldn't give a shit. Um, give the Ballon d'Or to a player who's never won it, says Peter Parker. Uh, they're in again. Danny Welbeck. Oh, I thought he'd scored. The net rippled, but it was the side. Actually, people really do like the idea of a porn star 11. I wouldn't know any to do it. I only know Johnny Sins because I've heard you lot talk about him. Um, Nicholas Cage says, we all know the referees are bad, but what do you think can be done about it? It's not like the average level of refs abroad is better. Sure, there are a few referees across the league who are good. Uh, here's Salah. Pass back shot. Weird. He's having a bad day, Salah, isn't he? Missing a lot of chances. Um, you know what? Honest take on refereeing, right? On the pitch, you're always going to get it wrong. I could be the referee and you'd be going, you're apps, Goldbridge is a dick. You know, you'd be going, I mean, I'd love to do it. But where the mistakes cannot happen is VAR. On field, there will be mistakes. VAR should be done a lot better. Stretch time. I'll tell you what. If this is me for Liverpool Brighton, imagine what it's going to be like for Man City Arsenal. Or oh, I'm going to go from this to this. I'm loving the streams at the moment. I think it's just general excitement. Champions League's coming back. Three Premier League games this week. Euros. Uh, Mia Khalifa should be goalkeeper. She's got great handling school skills and could probably save most things with her mouth as well. I don't know what that means. I don't even know who it is, but I'm just reading the chat. Uh, Happy Easter Sunday. What's the best Easter egg, says Owen? I think the best Easter egg I've seen this year was the randoms one because I prefer sweets to chocolates. So it was a randoms Easter egg. But the best, the best, the best, I don't know whether there's an Easter egg for it, but the best chocolate bar none is uh, Marvelous Creations by Cadbury's, where it's got bits of popping candy and jelly in it. Absolutely lovely. Yeah. Uh, Taylor Swift or Dua Lipa going in Crocodile Pit, says Rahul. We've invented a new game. It's called Crocodile Pit. Me and my mates play it in the pub. Basically, two people, you've got to kick one in a crocodile pit. It's a bit like either or, but it's far more sinister. You can't play quarterfinals because they're, they're dead. 
Uh, Toblerone's very nice chipmunk guy. I tell you what, be good. I tell you what would be a good one. Throw something into a crocodile pit that'll kill the crocodile. So polar bear or hippo. probably going to be a polar bear pit isn't it because i think a polar bear would get a, would get it depends how many crocodiles there are actually good point anyway liverpool on the attack it's been a good game bradley does well nunez good defending by dunk brighton just need to show a bit of composure here the break is on oh i love that's football you know united stand is bread and butter, and I love United, but it's fucking hard work. It's it, it you know, I thought I was gonna have a heart attack last night in the match reaction. I was getting more and more tight chested. Well, I wasn't, I'm lying, but uh, I could feel the stress definitely high blood pressure. I don't want to fake a heart attack because people who have them will be like, you know, don't get them angry, they might have another one, but you know what I mean. That they, that it wasn't a heart attack, but uh. Peter Parker, I'm not even going to answer that. Don't even put that in my head. Um, no, 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 no. Happy Easter Sunday. Yeah, Owen, thank you very much. Um, if you threw a hippo into a crocodile pit, it'd crush the crocodile, says Gus. Imagine that, the poor crocodile. It'd be there going, oh my God, it's like each, it's like Christmas. Look at all this food. And it'll crush them. Uh, Eminem says, didn't order a yappuccino. What do you think about Liverpool this season, says CR7. I actually think they've got two away games, Villa and Man United, that is probably going to cost them. Here's Diaz. He's on his own. He needs some support. And he messes it up. It was a 3v2. And uh, So it's a good game, this. It is a good game. Uh, Gross has hurt his knee. He's probably going to get... I'll be surprised if Diaz doesn't get booked here because if you go down hurt, hurt you normally get booked. But uh, when's TUSFC coming back, says Abdullah. I'm tempted to bring this back. People are like, when is it coming back? And I'm sort of like, maybe it's more interesting than a Man United career mode. I don't know. United stand all that's football. What's going in the bear pit? Crocodile pit. Um, I'd have to put that football in there, but I'd cry. I couldn't do it to United stand. It's been with me too long and it's my club. But uh, that's football to me is like, uh, it's like your mistress. I'm married to the United stand, but the mistress is way more fun. Not that I've ever had one. I've just heard. Liverpool. Oh. Oh. Bloody hell. Good defending by Brighton. Cole says, Crocodile Pit, Man City or VAR? We can both bloody go in because they're hand in hand anyway. They're married. They can go together. A hippo versus a polar bear is like the Champions League finals is don't mind me. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they are... Look, I have to be careful. The RSPCA are constantly mon monitoring me. I don't know. They've got anything better to do. Like, go down your local park. Ducks are getting... And geese are getting nicked all the time. God knows what's happening to them. Um, monitoring streams for hypothetical fights. But yes, uh, a polar bear and a hippo in a, in a Sainsbury's car park. Well, I think you could sell it out at Wembley, to be honest. Mark, pick any animal you could have as a pet, this says Jack. I tell you what, a hippo against a polar bear in an in, in an octagon would probably sell out more than Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. It would be incredible. The trouble is they wouldn't know the limits. Like, at least when it's boxing, you've got rules, you can't throw certain punches. That would just be a bloody bloodbath. And the thing is, the RSPCA will be moaning about it. Trust me, 
You chuck a bloody... You put them in an octagon, they're willing. They're up for it. 38 minutes gone. Yeah, Brighton... I'll tell you what I'm going to say about Brighton. Well organised. But not what... They're, they're not what they used to be. Are you going to start streaming pro clubs as Callum? I don't know. I don't know. I find it difficult because... I can't commit as much as those lads can. They can play for hours and I just can't do it. So... I almost need my own team to do it. No, not really. Honey Badger is the go. Here we go. Honey Badger talk again, Raz. Honey Badger this. Honey Badger that. Why don't you go and fuck a Honey Badger? Uh, that I went too far, Raz. Sorry. I went too far. Who remembers Honey Monster? You wouldn't mess about with him. Can you remember the Honey, Man Honey Monster ad? You can't get them anymore. There's McAllister. Sugar Puffs. Can't get them anymore. And before people start complaining, it's a cereal. It's not some code word for being homophobic. Nothing like that. It's a, it's a cereal. It was very nice. I don't know why you can't get it anymore. I suspect the sugar content was, was massive. But they were absolutely lovely. You know cereal that you put in your milk? And your milk, you want to drink a pint of it afterwards. Like crunching up cornflakes. Sugar puffs. Ah, oh, they were so good. They were so good. I'll tell you what. I used to eat sugar puffs whole. I'd put my hand in, grab a big one, and, and just chuck it all in my mouth. Didn't even need milk. Oh, lovely play by Brighton. They've got a break. But Liverpool work hard. Um, I've enjoyed this game. I tell you what, I, I hope Man City and Arsenal's a good game because this has actually been a really good game. I'm going to tell you, these streams are educational. Honey Monster Wheat Puffs from Asda only get two and a half stars. Honey Monster Wheat Puffs at Tesco, two stars. Why? Why are people only giving them two stars? I'm intrigued now. Let's have a look at the reviews. Uh, reminds me of my childhood. Tastes like sugar puffs, but once finished, you have a delicious banana milkshake recommended if you're a sweet kind of person. Absolutely awful. Had one spoonful. The cats ate the rest. Box went in the bin. Had been so looking forward to sugar puffs. Such a disappointment. Recipes changed to delete any sweetness or flavour. Not great. More honey needed. Absolutely awful. Happy had these for years and just wanted them to go for out for a box. And what a disappointment. Uh, disgusting. Nothing like the sugar puffs from years ago. Don't spoil your childhood memories of lovely Christmases of I have done by buying them. Yeah, that's harsh. There you go. You can't really get them anymore then. Edge of the box. McAllister blocked. Diaz will take the corner. Golden Nuggets were goated as well, says the Inquisition. Sean Connery says, uh, Happy Easter to you and your family. I'm a Liverpool fan, but every game that is on, I turn the TV down and listen to you. That's football is goated. That, that's football is a great community. You're very welcome. Unlike others who do it well, you're, you are the people. I've had so many offers, not just professionally, but obviously I get a lot of offers from, let's be honest, women. And um, I'm a happily married man. And I get a lot of offers in a footballing sense to go and do multi-guested shows. Can you come on this? We've got a great idea. We want to put you on a panel. And I say, I'm happily married to my community. They're the stars of this show. And uh, they're, they're what make the great content. So you can shove your panel up your arse. Uh, Lascelles is out for nine months with an ACL injury. Dom, if you want real talk, you can have that on here. I'm telling you now, these modern pictures, pic pictures, not pictures, pictures that they play on are massively increasing knee injuries. 
It's happening in the women's game, it's happening in the youth game, and it's happening in the men's game. We never used to get this many knee injuries, and we're getting it because the pitches are synthetic and uh, the body is struggling with it. Are you ready for Southgate as your new manager, says the Celadons? I'm Southgate out from day one, if we get him. I'm starting the Southgate out movement. Don't care what the results are. I will remain Southgate out from day one. And I will push that agenda, regardless of whether we win the league. Theoretical crock pit here. Southgate era United stand or Ten Hag era that's football? That doesn't make sense because it's Ten Hag era that's football now. If Madrid get Mbappe, do they win the sex tuple, says Peter Parker. I don't think Real Madrid with Mbappe will, will, will dominate European football, to be honest with you. I still think the Premier League's stronger. And as we've seen before, football has taught us many great lessons. International sides, domestic sides. I saw it with Real Madrid. They had Zidane, Beckham, Carlos, R9, Figo. They didn't dominate European football. Football is always about the best system, not necessarily the best players. Eminem says, put a cue if Liverpool are clear of United. Mm. Sugar puffs look like a lady's downstairs, says PSN. Mm. I I'd check your hard drive because they're not hairy. They're smooth, sugar puffs. So mm, maybe, can we, can we check that chat? Um, it was a super chat as well, so probably can, yeah. Um, uh, Jarvis says, that's actually true about the new football pitches. A couple of the new pitches have been installed in my country and a lot of our players are now coming up with knee injuries. Yeah, it's, it is true, Jarvis. People, they're, they're, they're terrified of it actually being discussed. I've spoken about this for a long time. There's... Um, I think this season we've seen a 10% or 20% increase in injuries in the Premier League. No one wants to talk about it because there's so much money in the game and no one wants to be exposed uh, that these pitches that are pristine. I mean, obviously, normally a football pitch 10 years ago, 20 years ago, it wouldn't look like that. You'd have a muddy goal area. You'd have a muddy centre circle. But... They're not. They're, there's not a lot of give in these pitches. You think you play on a muddy pitch? It's like a sponge. There's a lot of give. The ball doesn't move as smoothly, obviously, for passing. But these pitches are a problem. There needs to be work done into it. But they won't do anything about it. And we're going to see more and more long-term injuries, which will dilute the football we see because we're going to see more and more players injured. I actually think it's already a big thing, but more and more clubs are going to be looking at um, medicals and types of bodies because I think certain, we're all different and I think some bodies are more susceptible on these pitches. Um, Mendo did his uh, ACL when he was 16. I mean, look, I've played the game. When I used to play between the ages of 14 and 16, I played Saturday football, Sunday football and school football and all those teams were good. So we'd be playing cups, training three times a week. We had we only used to play with two subs and I, I don't remember across that two years anybody ever being injured. And yet we were playing probably three times a week, training. No one ever got injured. Nowadays, 14 and 16 year olds are getting ACLs, bad ankle injuries... It, you, you, the only time I remember people getting injured was if you had an unlucky tackle and you broke your leg. That was it. You never got knee injuries and stuff like that. But it's happening in the youth game a lot. My daughter plays under 15s, and this season, three of her play, three of her teammates have had bad knee injuries. Apex says, uh, De Zerbi is showcasing why he should take the, England, the Liverpool job. Uh, 
The Hills says, can we have a biscuit, Paul? Custard creams, bourbons or Oreos? Well, we haven't even done a poll here. I've dropped enough hints. I will do that for you, mate. Custard creams. I don't eat any of these anymore. Do you want to know what my healthy lunch was today? And I absolutely loved it. I had half an avocado. Uh, a, a fried egg. And mushrooms in garlic. It was lovely. And it's funny how you can eat certain foods that you think would never fill you up. Like avocado is quite filling. There's your biscuit, Paul. Mark, it's reassuring to know you've embraced the 1970s and bushes, says Nick P. Vintage Nick. If you know, you know. Uh, half time. Why are you clapping? Because I think it's been a good game. I think it's been a good game. Maybe it's because the last game I watched was Man United-Brentford, which was absolutely diarrhea. But that's not a bad game of football. Um, Harpo says you've just shat yourself. Um, they're better athletes now. Ligaments can't take it, says Chris. I also think it's to do with the pitchers and the intensity of games, uh, how, how many minutes they're having to play. Uh, TTV says there's booze at Anfield. Don't know why. Maybe, maybe they think they should have had a penalty. Gems had an omelette for dinner. You can't beat an omelette. I love a good omelette. I'm not very good at making them, but you can't you can't beat it. So give us your thoughts at half time. As you can see, statistically, Liverpool have had more chances. You'd still expect them to win the game, but at the moment, Brighton are making a game of it. Um, league table looks like this at the moment. Obviously, Man City Arsenal is our featured game, but uh, Liverpool would be top by one point if they draw this game. Obviously, they'll be wanting to win. Um, Arsenal, Man City really at least need a draw. Can't be doing with a Man City win. Uh, Villa, I mean, they're not out of a title race, Aston Villa, I suppose. Um, well, they are, actually, when you look at it. They, 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 they've uh, they've played a game extra, haven't they? Hold on, let's just pause it there. I'm going to look at the league table. Uh, Aston Villa in fourth, looking good for uh, Champions League football because uh, we think fourth and fifth will get Champions League football. So Spurs and and Villa both looking very good. Massive gap to Manchester United on 48 points. Uh, Newcastle on 43, with uh, West Ham in between on 44. Um, Chelsea nowhere to be seen. Uh, although they do play Manchester United on Thursday night. That, which actually leads me lovely into what I was going to say. Um, don't forget, we're back. The international break is over. Real football is back. And it's a massive week on that football of, of Premier League action. Obviously, we're doing Man City Arsenal after this. Tuesday night, uh, we will be doing a watch along. I'm just deciding which game to do, but probably West Ham Tottenham, which is at 2018. Uh, no, it's 2015, quarter past eight. Um, Newcastle Everton, Forest Fulham, Bournemouth Palace, Burnley Wolves and West Ham against Tottenham. I don't know what's televised. I don't know whether they're all on the game or all, all on the game. They're all on the game, uh, all on the TV or not. But we're doing West Ham Tottenham on Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday night, Man City Villa. Another quarter past eight game. So Man City Villa on Wednesday night. We'll obviously be keeping an eye on Arsenal Luton, but that should be straightforward for Arsenal, really. And then uh, Liverpool uh, play Sheffield United on Thursday, but we'll be doing on the United stand, Chelsea against Manchester United. So Tuesday night, West Ham against Spurs on here. Wednesday night, Man City against Villa on here. And then Thursday night, Chelsea United on United stand. And then back on Saturday, another big, big day of football. You've got uh, Palace uh, against Man City at half 12. I'm not doing that. Um, but it's Brighton against Arsenal at half five, which will be a big, big game. And then Sunday, you've got Manchester United hosting Liverpool at um, Old Trafford at 3.30. What a big game that's going to be. Um, Tottenham play Nottingham Forest at 6 o'clock next Sunday. Make that make sense. Have we ever had a 6 o'clock game on a Sunday? Why have we got a 6 o'clock game on a Sunday? Forest fans must be absolutely fuming. And that I'm not one, so I'm not fuming before anyone cracks the crappiest joke of the last decade. Um, but why are they kicking off at 6 o'clock next Sunday? Weird. Um, Harpo's would love to do a cream pie. Well done. How's the FPL team doing, says Peter? Yeah, forgot to do it. Forgot to do it. Yeah. 
Um, I still fancy Liverpool to win this in the second half, yes. Please do subscribe to the channel, bottom right-hand corner. Uh, we are getting very close to 125,000. Get involved with that football. You're all welcome on here. It doesn't matter who you support. Everybody's welcome. It's a fantastic community where you are the stars of the show uh, by what you bring to it. So make sure you subscribe. Bottom right-hand corner, there's always daily content on here. Lots of watch-alongs, etc. Uh, you're very, very welcome. And of course, um, we had some relationship advice yesterday, which has prompted a little bit of a uh, agony bridge weekend. So if you've got any things you need helps with, uh, we've been talking about pets um get involved you're very welcome um your lads oh people who are choosing oreos are being called virgins uh, custard creams 35 percent bourbons 27 percent and oreos 39 percent. i mean for me i'm uh, probably just gonna go and have um one of my homemade um biscuits which are far more healthy than that but uh that's just the phase i'm going through at the moment um how did you propose? Romantic or simple? Very romantic, Sam. It was symbolic and it was romantic. Um, start, bench, sell, pizza, steak, burger. Not really my kind of food, Emra, really. Uh, pizza, don't really eat a lot of it. Steak, haven't ate a lot of it for a while. Probably go for a burger, actually. Um, Sam says Oreos are pe for people who don't get to lick anything else. Harsh, Sam, but uh, say what you mean. Uh, Wonder Dog says, I don't know how Bourbons are losing. Um, I loved living in Dublin, Welsh. Yeah, I absolutely loved it. Uh, I was fortunate enough to go there twice last year, so I'm hoping to go again this year. Refs are abysmal, uh, says Shirley. I think there's a lot of, you know, a lot of Liverpool fans, sorry, who are not happy with the referee. Um, and... Why do people say more healthy or more fun? It's funnier and healthy, uh, says Deck E. And Bourbon's losing to custom creams. We used to be a country, says Jack. Um, yeah, look, I think it was a penalty on Nunez because it was a penalty to Mudrick yesterday. But I've said this so many times, like... Obviously, I don't, I don't give a shit. It's um, Liverpool against Brighton. Uh, I'd rather Brighton won. But the it is a penalty because if it's a penalty against Mudrick, it's a penalty against Diaz. But this is what I don't... This is what I despair about. The refereeing is so bad in this country, they can't get to grips with one game without actually being consistent. Like, the fact that it's the English Premier League and on the same weekend, one's not a penalty and one's not... How can you have an integral? How how the league? How can the league have integrity when you ref referee every every game individually? Like the whole point of VAR is to provide consistency and say, hold on a minute, we gave a penalty yesterday for that. We've got to be consistent here and give a penalty. Like it, it, the, the, it, there's no reason not to, and I think that's where football fans get so frustrated because there's literally no reason not to. You've got VAR. You can literally go into the referee's ear and say, hold on a minute, David. The the penalty for Mudrick yesterday was reviewed and given by VAR. That's softer than that's just happened there. I think you need to take a look at it. But ref's been crap. Get these Brighton players on Aquaslide, says Zach. And uh, greetings from Russia, says Brennan. Be on the lookout for a young up-and-coming Russian player called Yuri. He's going to be world-class. Um, and if you could pick one player from a different nation to play for England, who would it be? I think I'd take a centre-back or a left-back, says Jack. Um, that's a good question. Who would I take for England if I could take one player? Well, I don't need a re I don't really need a midfielder. I don't need a striker. Um, I think I'd take Vinicius Jr. and put him on the left, actually. Yeah. You could take a you could take a centre back, but it's boring. You know, our defense, in international football, we're fine with the players that we've got. I think I'd take Vinicius Junior and put him on the left. I, I I don't really think we've got a left winger that I go yeah. Saka on the right, but I don't think we've got a left winger where I go yeah. And uh, I think it would have to be him. You could also go for a goalkeeper as well, as uh, Dar says. Uh, Ten Hag is a PE teacher. 
says Aphis. I may I don't know why people start talking about Man United. It's Super Sunday. It's not the United stand. And um it might be beyond your grasp, but I've been doing that football for years and I don't really talk about United much on here. So and I certainly switch off from United on here. So I don't uh, my wings are like a shield of steel. JP, thank you very much for your super chat. Um Jan says uh, Southgate would waste Venetius. He'd probably bloody bench him, wouldn't he, to be honest with you. Um, Stephen says, I'm surprised you wouldn't take Allison because you hate Pickford. Well, yeah, the, as I said, there's centre-backs, there's goalkeepers, there's left-backs, but I'm obviously going to go for... I mean, Venetius Jr. is one of my favourite players, and that's a hole in the England team. So that, that, that's my explanation, really. Yeah, yeah. Do you think Chelsea should sack Pochettino, says the True Bigger Show? No, I don't. Um, I think that um, Eddie Howe, Pochettino, Ten Hag are somewhat in a similar position. They've all got mitigating circumstances with injuries and, you know, disruption from up above. Um, and I don't really see a manager out there that's going to come in and make Chelsea better or Newcastle better or Manchester United better that's available at the moment. Um I think the biggest mistake any of those clubs could make is to bring in someone like Mourinho because it would be a short-term fix that would ultimately set you back a year or two. So I think I think you've got to you've got to give Pochettino the summer, you've got to give Eddie Howe another summer and you've got to give Ten Hag another summer. But the next two months could dictate that because if they go and lose a load more games then every manager has to be sacked. Um Ben says, Mark, you look like you can't swim. Well, looks can be deceiving then. Don't judge a book by its cover because I bloody can swim. Uh, breaststroke is my best one. Uh, swimming sense. Um, but uh, yeah, I definitely can swim. Um, I've got a bit of a bit of, bit of agony and aunt coming in here. Bram says... Me and my girlfriend broke up. I feel lost right now. She said she was not ready for a relationship. Then three days later, I tried speaking with her again. She said she's all right talking to someone else. Any advice? Coward. Snake. Backstabber. Yeah, she's she's basically thrown you a lie to uh, make herself feel better. Uh, so she's broken up with you and said she's not ready for a relationship because basically she's getting a little itch somewhere else for somebody else. Well, let's just hope she does get an itch down there um, because liars don't deserve to get on. Um, Bram, I wish I wish you'd watched yesterday's stream because then when she dumped you, you could have done the porn thing. You could have said, good, I'm glad we're breaking up because you don't turn me on physically anymore and I've been spending too much time on porn. Um, that would have absolutely destroyed that lying, backstabbing snake and uh, you could have cried in private, but you could have really give her, an, give her some back. Um, yeah. Um, bag of dirt. She ain't the one, says Jordan. When you're bringing back Cooking with Goldbridge, says James. Oh, when I can find some team time, yeah. Definitely. Uh, Kai says, if you're a United fan, you deserve it. <laughs> Even that made me laugh. But uh, And I'm a United fan. But uh, yeah, move on, bro, says Joseph. She's cheating on you, says Joy Boy. Um, she's for the road, bro, says Charlie. Solid Blake says he doesn't need any water to do breaststroke. Oh, yeah. um, what are your thoughts on Xabi Alonso staying at Leverkusen? Um... Nick P says, my breaststroke is terrible. I aggressively flap like a seal. Is that in the water? Mark, you look like you can't fly. Says who to blame? Yeah, I, I definitely can't fly. Um, what do I think about um, Alonso staying at Leverkusen? Um, I think he wants the Real Madrid job. It's a bit like the guy who got dumped by his girlfriend. They've not done it because they want to stay with Leverkusen. And she's not done it because she's not ready for a relationship. That Alonso's staying at Leverkusen because he's been tapped up by Real Madrid. You get to a point in life where you can see the wood for the trees and um, nobody does anything with it. So you're telling me Xavi Alonso has gone, 
I'm um, basically going to win the league with Leverkusen, which is their ceiling. I've got the job. I've got the dream job at Liverpool. I've got the dream job at Bayern Munich. I'm not ready for that at the moment. I think I'll stay another year at Leverkusen. Bollocks. He's been tapped up for Real Madrid. That's what's happening. Um, my mum called you fit. Do you think Sheffield United will stay up, says Harpo? No. Your mum's got sense, though. Um, do you believe in reincarnation, says Max? Uh, no. Because it's a bloody big coincidence if reincarnation exists that you start off with a human and then you do everything else. Like, if reincarnation exists, why can't I remember being a swan or a hippo or a polar bear? So, no, I don't. If you do, though, respect each to their own. Where do you think Liverpool will go next? Well, we're about to start the second half, so that's where they're going to go next. Um, I don't know, really. I think, I think whoever changes their manager in the Premier League this year, whether it be Liverpool, United, Newcastle, there's a very distinct lack of superior options. So it's going to be a drop-off from Klopp for Liverpool. But I think risk is the word I would say. Whoever changes their manager this summer is going to have to take a risk, going to have to take a punt. Um, there's not an open goal, is there? That's what I'm trying to say. There's not like a, an obvious choice. So if they go for Almiron, Almerim, then he's a risk. Um, if they go for De Zerbi, it's a risk. Um, Giles Silver says, don't worry about that girl. That God has removed... Thank God she's been removed from your life. He saw things you didn't see. He heard conversations you couldn't hear. Says Giles. Deep. Scars says, can we get a last big push on custard creams? I'm closing it down in a minute. Uh, Matthew McFadden says, Sally Moore's scored. They're not playing today, Matt. They're playing on Friday. Unless I've got it completely wrong. Yeah, they're not playing today. What are you on about, Matt? God knows what he's seen. <clears throat> Do you get the hour forward in where you live? In the UK, the clocks went forward today because of uh, British summertime. So at midnight, it instantly went to one o'clock in the morning. So yesterday, it would have been 2.07 and now it's 3.07. So the clocks go forward. But I don't know whether you get that everywhere else. Because when I did the United Stand at 10 o'clock today, I could distinctly tell that it was nine o'clock for some people. Do you get it in Europe? Simon says we get it in Germany. Poland's the same. Uh, on injuries, new triangle stud stick in the turf. Says um, JP. That's a good point as well. Boots. Rooney or Bale, says Peter Parker. Rooney. This ref's out of control, you know. I don't know. Brighton players are trying to get... I didn't see it, so I don't know what they're getting mad about. Danny Bolbeck got booked. Johnny says it went forward in America last year. Descent for Welbeck. Uh, 
Uh, Diaz with the shot. Of course, Liverpool's next game is Sheffield United, so you'd expect them to win that. Come to New York. It's lit over here, says Daniel. And Mark, do you bet on football or gamble in general, says Joe? Um, no, I haven't done for a long time, actually. Um, I really... It's not really for any reason other than the fact it's a bit like FPL. I just... I don't really get the time to really do it. I mean, I... I used to really enjoy doing an accumulator. I mean, my favourite ones were both teams to score. And it's great to do it in the lower leagues for that. 9am um, in Texas, says Reb. Van Dyke booked. Ref is a tool, says Toby. Some of the yellow cards have been a joke. At least he's consistent. Rank your England manager preferences. Who do you take now? Deitch, Hodgson, Southgate, Jose, Howe, Lampard or Steve from down the road, says Gulldeal. I'd like Mourinho. I'd like Mourinho. Ayan says, what's the best study uh, place to study uni in England? I never went to uni, but I would say traditionally it's uh, Cambridge or, uni or Oxford, isn't it? Mark, is United Stand going on tour soon? Uh, well, they're going to the US on tour. Um, I know I've got a mini tour coming up as well, which is general football. Right, I'm going to close this poll on biscuits because I've got no interest in it. 38% went for Oreos, 36% uh, went for Custard Greens, and 27% went for Bourbon. So Oreos wins. Mmm, there we go. Oh, God, I'm going to be tired today. It's, not, it's nothing to do with streaming. It's the bloody... Um... It's the clocks. Didn't go to bed till two last night. And then I was up at like half seven. That's not enough. Five and a half hours sleeping is not enough. Uh, team news for Arsenal and Man City will be out in the next sort of 20 minutes. Gems went to bed at 6.30 this morning. What were you doing, Gems? Have a coffee, Mark, says Mark. I th I'm going to have a... Well, there's a break between Liverpool and Arsenal for about 15 minutes, so uh, I will do. Having said that, it won't be that much. It won't be that much at all. This is... Uh, this ain't going to finish until about 5 to 4. I'm not going to have long at all. Rolando starting to get the big game feels for the Arsenal City game. Yeah, I just have a bad feeling for Arsenal, really. Lovely ball out wide by Salah. Nunez has drifted to the left. Good ball in there. Bradley. Goes for the shot. Brentford keeper gets it. Mark, he's funny, but Faz has got zero ball knowledge, says Goldio. Um... Look, you've got to respect different opinions, but the Ten Hag out thing, I just don't... I've said it to him so many times. I don't understand what you're saying. You're just getting... You're, you're telling me the players are shit. You're telling me the manager's shit, but you want to get rid of the manager. And yet the players have been here a lot longer. And then you don't really know who you want to bring in. You just talk about Zidane, who isn't going to come. So I just don't... Look, it, it takes all opinions at the end of the day. But I just would never be saying sack a manager when I haven't got a solution. I've always said you can't hypothetically sack a manager and then wash your hands of the responsibility of replacing them. And I think there's a lot of angry United fans at the moment, quite rightly. Great chance there. Cross came in. McAllister flipped it off his head, but it just went wide. Um, there's a lot of angry United fans at the moment. And you've got to respect the fact that they want to, they want to see change, but they want change, but they don't want to be in charge of the change. And I'm like, I don't want change for change's sake. I want defined change. So if you're going to sack the manager, tell me who he's coming in, because it might be worse. It could be Southgate. In the chippy down the road from the Etihad at the moment, says Luke. 
Oh, I'd love a good chippy. I haven't had a chippy in ages. Liverpool are pushing here now. McAllister's had a great game, you know. You sense it's coming for Liverpool. They're always so good at the end of the second half, at the start of the second half, aren't they? They just they just come out in the second half so good. Oh, he's gone down Salah. That's not a penalty for me. Eric Ten Hag movement reminds me of the Liz Trust backers, says Goldio. Uh, fun fact, Arsenal haven't won the Premier League since the PS2 era, says GP. And uh, do you watch any pre-season games for United? I know Man United play Liverpool here in the States this summer, says Flores. Yeah, we'll be there, mate. Um, done that one as well. Only drive a moped or any car you want, but plus trailer, says Reb. Mopeds are good fun. I've not been on one for years. Still 34 minutes to go here. Sammy says it's Chelsea United in four days. Who's going to win in the Battle of the Flops? Well, you call it Battle of the Flops. You're not even on page one, mate. Look, we're in sixth. Like, we're not doing very well, but there's there's levels to how shit we are. You know, you're not even on that page. So, stop trying to pretend that you're in the same as Manchester United. Like, we are doing shit, but Chelsea are doing worse. There's There's, there's no doubt about that. I watched, uh, John Bishop, I watched the latest series of True Detective. I've never watched any others, but I quite liked the snow aspect. So, you know, if it's got snow in it, I'll normally watch it. Thanks, Zana. Hope you're doing well. Good cross, headed away. Brighton's best hope is a... A break, that's going to be a yellow card. Joe Gomez, yeah. That was a yellow card, that one. I need to go back and watch the first season, yeah. When's Cobra Kai coming out? I've, I enjoyed that. I forgot it was a thing. Phil Mitchell says, Mark, are you going bold? No. Nope. I don't think I will now. It was in my family, but I don't think it will, you know. Cool Runnings, I've not seen that for ages. I was, I was looking at the Easter telly today. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Ben-Hur. Endo was a great signing. An amazing price compared to what Chelsea paid for their midfielders, says Jack. Yeah, but the interesting thing is Liverpool wanted Lavia and um, Casido, didn't they? And they definitely... Well, actually, did Liverpool end up with better players with McAllister and Endo? Or is it just about the environment? Would Casido, I mean, Lavia's injured, obviously, but 
I actually think sometimes it's down to the club you go to. Because Arsenal wanted Mudrick. Would he be shit at Arsenal or would he be better? And I think if Casido had gone to Liverpool, he wouldn't be what he is at Chelsea. I think he'd be better. So it's worked out well for Liverpool getting Endo and McAllister, of course. But I still think that they would have... Um, Casido would have been a good signing for Liverpool. Uh, as T-Sub uh, T says, environment. Endo was a great signing, uh, an amazing price. Uh, yeah, I've done that from Jack. Thank you very much. Well, Brighton are putting a shift in here. And they've got a 3v2. Although Quanz has done really well. There's a foul. What place would the full England team be in the Premier League, says Aaron? Um, on that league table, where would I put England? I think they'd probably be where Man United are, actually. Yeah. They wouldn't be able to live with the top five because the top five all play good football. But I think Southgate with that England squad would be able to grind it into sixth. Uh, controversial there that he's not given a foul on Salah because uh, they've got a bit of a break on here, Brighton. Who scored the goals, says James Wright. Uh, Diaz equalised for Liverpool. Danny Welbeck scored in the first two minutes for Brighton. Good goal by Welbeck. Opinion on Trozard at Arsenal, says Guy. Good, good, good player. Good signing. Jeff's feeling sick at the prospect of Southgate grinding. I've just got a feeling Brighton might score again, you know. Liverpool, I, I think there's a lot to be said about international break. And this is why I worry about Arsenal. It is hard after the international break for any team to hit rhythm. Because they've had two weeks off. If Arsenal win, double is Arteta better than Klopp, says Connor. No. No. Um, Hawkins says hi Mark it's my dad's birthday he loves you and watches all your streams his name is Chris and he's turning 47 could you wish him a happy birthday happy birthday to Chris hope you're having a good day mate it's a lovely ball into Bradley on the overlap bad cross Alexa says can Brighton hold on Alexa play hold on by the communards no, I don't think it was then. No, Yaz. Alexa, play Hold On by Yaz. Well, actually, play Ale Alexa, play The Only Way Is Up by Yaz. Just talking to myself here. So Bosley with the shot. Wasn't bad, but it goes wide. 62 minutes. If you watch Cobra Kai, who do you prefer, Miguel or Robbie? Miguel, QWERTY. Good to see a lot of Alexas went off. I'll do one more. Hold on. So Bosley, Nunez, left foot. He's got to cut that back. Goes for a shot. Bit greedy there. Um, Alexa, play Hulk Hogan's theme tune. <laughs> when it comes crashing down and it hurts inside. I am a real American. I love that song. 
It's the same. It's a shame YouTube does you for copyright because I think if we could bring music into these streams, it would be even better. Yeah, Brighton. I think need to do a little bit more on the break here. Don't forget, we're sponsored by One Football on the Stats Carousel as well. Big shout out to them. Got all your latest breaking football news and transfer news for free. You can scan that QR code in the top right hand corner with your camera phone, or you can go through the link in the description and download it free on Apple and Android. Uh, have all the player ratings on there as well. Uh, edge of the box, McAllister. This is it. This is it. You know what? I literally tweeted about Alexi McAllister five minutes ago. Go and check my tweet at Mark Goldbridge because it should be framed. It should be framed as a premonition because Alexi McAllister's pass here is absolutely delightful. I've been talking about Alexi McAllister since August and the midfield of Liverpool. And I think today he has been immaculate. I don't know whether it's the Brighton thing. I don't know what it is. But he's been absolutely man of the match fantastic today. Absolutely incredible. What a signing. I mean, I think Declan Rice gets a lot more plaudits, but surely anybody who understands football knows that Alexi McAllister has got to be one of the players of the year. Look at this pass here. It's such a simple goal. And uh, there's not a lot Brighton can do about it because it's just pinpoint passing. 2-1. What did I say in the first half? There is such a thing of scoring too early, and uh, they have. Newcastle player with an ACL injury now, says Leroy. Yep. Come on, Brighton. They've got to be... You know what? They might start playing now, Brighton. They've been parking the bus for the last hour. They've got to go for it a little bit more. Scored way too early. Dun, 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 dun. I think I'm cute. I know I'm sexy. I got the looks that drive the girls wild. I'm just a sexy boy. Sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. That's not me singing that song. It's Shawn Michaels. Probably my favourite wrestler, actually, with Brett the Hitman Hart. Um, uh, Salah's back from injuries. World class and can put in such effort. We are off uh, pace of Premier League, says Barman. Yeah, I thought, I thought Salah looked very... I mean, uh, Man United have got Liverpool next week. I don't see a repeat of the FA Cup. I mean, I'm hoping we can be a banana skin that they slip up on, but I think it would be um, very optimistic to think that Man United can beat Liverpool in the league. Um, yeah. He sounded a little more like Sean Dykes than Sean Michaels, says Andy Milner. Why don't you think Deserbi is good enough for Liverpool? Um, you know what? Jurgen Klopp, to me, is a little bit like... Um, I'm trying to... Th give me... Yeah. Perfect. So, you know Breaking Bad? You know Brian Cranston, who plays the guy in Breaking Bad? It would be like, after three seasons, he announced he's leaving... And they've got to replace that actor. Like, he is the main guy in Breaking Bad. And Jurgen Klopp is the main guy at Liverpool. And it's not the end of their story. So you've got to replace the lead actor in Breaking Bad. And that is the Jurgen Klopp role. So my thing about De Zerbi is, is if, the, if you're getting De Zerbi to come in and replace Jurgen Klopp, it would be like replacing the main guy in Breaking Bad, Brian Cranston, with, I wouldn't say Ian Beale, but I'd certainly say, you know, 
I'm trying to think of a bang average actor without offending them. Certainly somebody off EastEnders. It's a risk. Phil Mitchell. Yeah. In fact, that's a good, that's a bloody good one. I'm going to give, you know, normally I'm the one, Jack. But yeah, it Zerbi replacing Klopp is like Phil Mitchell replacing Brian Cranston in Breaking Bad. They're both bold. They're both actors. But it's a huge risk. Now, look, Phil Mitchell could be really good in that role. He could put an American accent on and be really good at it. But I just think it's a massive risk. I really do. Um, but I don't know where they go. Who's winning Snooker World Championships, says Jensen. I think it'll be Ronnie, yeah. Nathan Allen says, I think that McAllister has to be signing of the summer. Single-handedly transformed our midfield for a cheap fee as well. I, I, yeah, look, that midfield, the way that Klopp rebuilt that midfield in one summer, I've, I've, I've been talking about it since the start of the season and I had no idea that Liverpool would be in a title race at that time. Uh, McAllister's been fundamental to that. Um, and it's, it's, amazed me. It's, it's amazing to me that it's took this long. And I don't even know if the mainstream have caught on yet. But, like, the way they go on about Declan Rice, who's been brilliant, but they dick ride Rice and they don't talk about McAllister. And... You know, the mainstream do dictate a lot of the agendas. And for some reason, they've not switched on to Alexi McAllister yet. And we've been talking about him all season. Because it's true. That's a yellow card. Oh, no. Play on to Salah. What a pass by Salah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That pass by Salah is absolutely exquisite, but there's an offside anyway. I was going to say the goalkeeper's made a right cock up, um, but the pass by Salah was 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 unbelievable. The goal's offside, but I was saying, oh my god, because the keeper makes a right cock up here. I mean that should be a foul for the foul on Nunez. He's onside. He's onside there. That looks onside to me. Tight, says Daniel Drake. I tell you what, it's tighter than an ant's chuff, this. It really does look like it's on. Hard to tell with the angle, angles, but it looks... If, it, if, it, if it's onside, that assist by Salah is absolutely incredible. Mr Bungle says it's well onside. And it's been given offside. Well, VAR, you see. I didn't see the line. Lots of people saying it was onside. I don't think we can argue with VAR lines. Well, actually, I think we can when they're doing it with a fucking ruler. Ant's Chuff is elite comedy, says Tiago. It's an, it's an old one from me. But um, the VAR needs to go, says General. Uh, Van Heck got booked for the foul in the build upon Nunez, which was the correct decision. Arsenal and City lineups are out. Uh, let's go. Okay. So, um, I actually can I can actually add them, you know, bit bit of bit of bit of technology for you here, but we can actually uh, get you the lineups on the screen for you as well. Visual. Make sure you're subscribing and smashing a like. We 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 spoil you on here. So there's the Man City lineup for you. Um, Atega, Akanji, Diaz, Aki, Vardiel, Rodri, Bernardo Silva, De Bruyne, 
Kovacic, Foden and Haaland. Uh, Stones is on the bench. Kyle Walker didn't make it. Grealish is on the bench and Doku is on the bench. So, yeah, four centre-backs in the back four. Um, Kovacic in the midfield. Um, yeah. And then the Arsenal lineup is on the screen for you there as well. You've got Raya, White, Saliba, Gabriel, Kivyar, Odegaard, Jorginho and Rice, Saka, Havertz and Jesus. Um, Trozard on the bench. Martinelli on the bench. I'm quite surprised he's gone with Jesus, to be fair. Thomas Partey on the bench. Um, yeah. Pretty strong teams from both. Corner to Brighton here. Uh, Phil Mitchell says, I'm not an average actor. I knew he'd be in here. 15 to go. Liverpool on the break again. It's a 2v1. Diaz into Salah. He's going to go himself, surely. Yeah, it's a good save by the keeper. He probably should have been trying to get that back to Diaz, really. I'm wondering here. I know a couple of Liverpool fans, and they do love Salah, but they do say sometimes he, he doesn't pass when he should do. Is the pass on to Diaz? It's sort of, it's sort of hard, to be fair. The defenders covered it quite well. Um... I think he's got to shoot from there, to be fair. Uh, Tombal says, I don't understand why this ref takes so long to make decisions. Diaz, though, is incredible. His skill is amazing and he's been more clinical. Sean says he had to shoot. Yeah, I don't think the reverse pass was on. I think the defender had covered it quite well. I am a real American. I'm not, actually. The current managerial situation will put Michael Edwards' reputation to the test. His first decision will be the most critical, says Danny. Which is interesting because I always thought that Liverpool knew who their next manager was going to be. And I, I, I went on record saying that, so I can't change my mind. I felt that because Klopp had told them in November and it didn't go public until January, that gave Liverpool two months to sort their manager out. But obviously they didn't. Uh, two teams playing four centre-backs is so boring. This will be a boring nil-nil, says Jack. Um, and Paul S Song says, I think some of these United fan channels are Eric out because they don't like you and United stand and lightly try to disagree and diss everything you guys say. I'm glad they're talking about us, mate, because I don't watch, I don't care, and respect to people who are out there making content. Um, let them crack on. I mean, literally, don't ever think about them unless someone asks me a super chat about it or a normal chat. I've got no interest in them at all. Um, and that's not being disrespectful. I just got, I've got no interest. Crack on with your own thing. When jealousy burns, you lose direction. Salah's fasting today, of course. Addy, I haven't watched it because it'd be a load of shit. How can you do a story on the controversial rise of Mark Goldbridge without speaking to Mark Goldbridge? I mean, uh, look, there's always two sides to the story. Um, thanks, Paul. Do you think you should sing um, professionally, says Danilo? Um, I'll leave that to the experts. Um, I would like to record a song just for prosperity. I'd like to do a musical because that's sort of talking singing, isn't it? You sort of go, I would like to be the Manchester United manager. Give me a hundred million pounds. 
No, no, well give me 80 then, and then I will buy a holding midfielder to take us to the top and back to glory. Talking sings easy. Thanks, Dougie. There's an argument going on in the chat about Ratatouille, the film. Cross comes in, Van Dyke heads it away. Ten minutes to go here. I've been saying it all off. I wouldn't be surprised if there's another goal in Brighton. I don't think they played particularly well. But, um, I think they scored way too early as well. Josh says, um, I wish you were my dad. Mine's boring and useless. Agony bridge. Um, Josh, at least you've got one. Look, Think about Luke, Sk Luke Skywalker. He didn't have a dad. And then when he did have a dad, it was the most evil person in the universe who basically massacred a bunch of kids. But we let him off because he saw the good in the end. I mean, have you ever thought about the story of Darth Vader in real terms, right? Evil. Evil genocide killing of people with magic, including younglings who are under 10. Does it for decades. And then right at the end, someone's going to kill his son. So he kills the person who's going to kill his son. And then everyone forgives him. It, it's not really a redemption arc, is it? Evil bastard kills loads of people, including kids. But everyone lets him off because at the end, he kills another evil bastard who's trying to kill his kid. It's not a redemption arc. You've got to do a lot more than that. You've got to at least do some community service. Kelleher made a good save there. Dunk. Ooh! Kelleher, nearly. Um, if Liverpool win and Man City and Arsenal draw, is the league's Liverpool, says Rob. No, 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 no. This league is always going to be about how many um, points Man City drop. Tony Curtis says, but it was the dark side making him do it. Oh, I've heard it all before. I cheated on you last night. It was the drink doing it. Not that no, I've been cheated. I've not. I've not been cheated on. I'm just saying, like when I was in the police, used to get a lot of excuses about things that went on. Um, Ratatouille was from the hood. Stuart Little was a trust fund kid. What's going on in the chat? We've got an argument going on about who'd win in a fight: Ratatouille or Stuart Little. The battle of the mouse, the, the mice, and the rats. Uh, do you want Seb to take over the channels if or when you retire, says Elliot? I think it's uh, a very unique skill set. I'd love him to do it if he wanted to do it, but I don't think it necessarily. I don't. Th I don't think it's necessarily likely that it will get passed down. Really, I don't see similarities. I know why I do what I do. I know where it came from. Um came from things like living room football, talking to myself in the mirror afterwards, doing that, you know, it's a very distinct apprenticeship. And I don't know whether the youth of today, but then again, there are other people that they can learn from, I suppose. I don't know. Whether, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. His name's not Ratatouille, it's Remy. Oh, here we go. Rasta Mouse would kill them all. Finger Mouse would definitely... Fuck them up. If you remember Finger Mouse, you're a goat. Basically, it was just a cardboard mouse on someone's finger. It was the 80s. Uh, would opinion on Rashford change if he ran like Diaz, says Jared? Well, it would be a bloody start. Uh, George says, greetings, Mark. Hope you're feeling much better. I'm loving the stream today, and I think we're in for a very passionate affair. Not me and you, George, um, but uh, Arsenal Man City. Could be a game of chess game. I still think... What? Handball? Either Stuart Little or Rummy, says Oliver Burton. 
Ashan says, what's the craziest story from your job in police? I can't tell it. I think the worst one, um, and I can tell you this because it was years ago. There was, uh, I'll change it slightly, but um, we went to this job at a school, right? And uh, the school rang us up and because so, obviously the police are there to help all sorts of people. So the school rang us up and they said that um, it was like six o'clock. The, the, the school had finished at four and uh, we got to the school and they basically said that, um, you know, we're all going to go home now. But this this kid's parents haven't picked him up. We've been trying to ring him up, ring them up. They've just not picked him up. He was about 11 and um, we can't get in contact with them. And, you know, it's six o'clock now and we, we don't really know what to do. So we um, found out the address and we went to the house where he lived and it was empty. And we said to the kid, are you sure this is where you live? And he went, yeah. And, and it wasn't empty this morning. Then the neighbour came round and said, uh, yeah, they've been moving out all day. And they they moved out. They just dumped their kid. I just couldn't fucking believe it. Absolutely unbelievable. Um, anyway, we tracked them down and they took him back. But I just it just stuck me with me for years. I was like, what sort of parenting is that? And you know what they said? He had, he had like two sisters and they were like, we just, we just find him really hard work. And it was like, you can't do that. You can't just bloody not pick your kid up to school and move house. But look, trust me, we can all sit and do this sort of thing and have a bit of laugh and a bit of a banter. But, you know, it's important to focus on the good things in life. You don't know how good you've got it because there's some horrible stuff that go on goes on in the world. And people spend so much time being toxic about things that really don't matter because there are innocents out there going through all sorts all around the world. And uh, there's some horrible people out there as well. Um, vile. So when you're being horrible to people online, you, you should appreciate how lucky you are that you, you're in that privileged position to be vile about who should play up front for whoever. Just shot wide by uh, Lalana there against his former club. Why do you think football is loved by so many, says Frederick? I don't know, but I'm glad I like it. I mean, imagine if I liked cricket or rugby. Nothing against it, but I'd rather like a sport that loads of people love. I think it's just a great thing. Yeah, Danger Mouse for the league, says Hulls. Yeah, I'm sorry, Danger Mouse wins. He's going to beat Ratatouille and he's going to beat Stuart Little. Danger Mouse is the GOAT um, vermin. Uh, Ash says Sir Jim Radcliffe might be the best rat. I'll have to see, hopefully. What do you put in your jacket potato, says Charlie? Uh, Favourite jacket potato topping is... It, it's all about the jacket potato, Charlie. You know, really, there are many... I, I like a bit of curry in there. I like a chilli with cheese and sour cream. I like beans and cheese. Um, But if it's all about the jacket potato. If the jacket potato isn't good... The filling is going to fail as well. Three minutes to go of normal time. Harvey Elliott, not Harvey Price, as I've said in the past. Although I think we'd all love to see that. It would be great to see Harvey in a Liverpool shirt. Bradley, corner. What about Splinter out of... Oh, Dan, he might have just done the mic drop. What about Splinter from Turtles? Ninja or Teenage? Um, Splinter against Danger Mouse. I think I think Splinter might win. What about Roland Rat? If you know, you know. <sighs> what did he used to say? Rat pens. <sighs> Rat pens. Was 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 um, Roland Rat from Birmingham then? Eee, rat pains. Um, Errol the hamster, Kevin the gerbil. What about Mickey Mouse? Oh, he's gonna get absolutely slaughtered. Put Mickey Mouse in a fight with Stuart Little, and he'd get beat up. 
the high-pitched Pratt. I can't even do his voice. It's so high-pitched. What about Jerry from Tom and Jerry? Yeah, more, 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 more of a tactician than a fighter. Still time for Brighton here. Rasta Mouse wins it for me, says Ross. Um, Fourth Life says the ultimate rat is Sol Campbell. <laughs> is that because he, well, he went from Spurs to Arsenal? That still burns Spurs fans, doesn't it? I mean, it... it, it what do you think? Actually, is a question football related. What do you think is the worst footballing traitor move ever? Because Sol Campbell Spurs to Arsenal was pretty. It sort of ticked a lot of boxes because it's massive rivalry, and it's also in your good years. Great save, but what a save by Verbruggen! That is a great save. Bottom corner. From Salah. Brilliant save. Yeah, but the, the trouble with the Sol Campbell one is he was all, he was a top-class centre-back. He was very much in his prime and he went from Spurs to Arsenal. So in the Premier League, I'm not sure there is a more... I mean, Figo did it, Real Madrid, Barcelona to Real Madrid. Um, but I don't think in the Premier League there's anything worse than that. Tevez to City wasn't as bad because we didn't give Tevez a contract. So it was bad... It, it wasn't because we, you know, he didn't snub us. We didn't want him. We should have kept him, but we, we didn't want him. Charlie Max says Figo. Pinky in the brain says Rob. Jerry from Tom and Jerry would batter everyone. Says Team Af. Uh, what are your thoughts on Gakpo? Says Ian. I do like him. I don't think he's established himself yet, though, has he? I think Sol Campbell's the ultimate Premier League trade to move. Michael Owen, he's dusted. Liverpool didn't want him. Paul Lintz from... But he didn't go direct from Man United to Liverpool anyway. And Man United didn't want him. So there has been quite a few. But I, th I think... Yeah, I think... Uh, you can't say Sterling because Man City wanted to sell him as well. Six minutes added on here. Adebayor... Says Jordan. Van Persie is a good one. Van Persie is a good one. Arsenal to Man United. Um, that's a great save by Verbruggen. I still think it's Sol Campbell. Ashley Cole. Ashley Cole's a big one as well. Yeah. I just love that, that quote from Ashley Cole. Um, see if I can find it for you. Here it is. I found it. So, Ashley Cole, considering this was many years ago, Ashley Cole um, gave an, a, a rare insight into his Arsenal departure and admitted he was naive and stupid at the time. The left-back wrote in his autobiography that he nearly crashed his car when he discovered Arsenal were only willing to pay him 55 grand a week. Um, now, considering we're talking over 20 years ago... Um, when I heard Jonathan Barton at repeat the figure of 55k and nearly swerved off the road, uh, Arsenal are taking the piss, Jonathan. Um, I yelled down the phone. I was trembling with anger and I couldn't believe what I'd heard. I mean, 55k back then was probably still a lot of money. Um, Xerxes one goal behind Osman and 100 million cheaper. Chop, chop, Jim, says uh, Charlie Max. Adi Bayor sliding worst traitor moment in Premier League history, says Hulls. Who wins in a fight, Darth Vader or Voldemort, says Dom Genius. I'd presume Darth Vader, but magic. Mo Johnston from Celtic to Rangers in the 80s. Rangers fans threw away their season tickets, says uh, Guitar Boy.
Portsmouth. Some niche ones here. Peter Crouch, Portsmouth to Southampton. Big game tonight. Big game in half an hour, mate. I'm just going to get myself a quick cup of coffee and uh, I will be back just after four o'clock. Meant to be starting at four, but I'm sure you'll forgive me. And if you don't, I'm sorry. I've got to have a drink. Uh, we're only 10 subscribers away from 125,000. You've been absolute legends. This will probably end up being a better game, you know. Sometimes the uh, starter is better than the main course. Salah's definitely looking a lot sharper. Yeah, we're only 10 subscribers away from 125,000. So please do subscribe. Bottom right-hand corner. Get involved. Uh, it's Arsenal against Liverpool coming up. Sorry, Arsenal against Man City at the Etihad coming up next. Salah's just had another shot wide. Still a minute to go. Thanks for all your contributions. Been some good funny moments. It's all it's all about. Football and fun. Hi, Mark. Hope you and your family are having a lovely Easter, says Becky. It's been a great game. Thanks, Becky. Hope you're doing well. Enjoying your Easter as well. T tomorrow's more, more of a day off for me than today. I'm I'm busy today. It's the way it is, though. Football. Oh, Gravenberg. Referees. This referee's weird. That look, that did look like he's really hurt and he just plays on. Old Firm. Oh, no, he's not. I think he was faking. Old Firm, watch along next week. Very close this season. What time's it kicking off, Guitar Boy? I'll have a look. I'll always, you know me, I'll always have a look. Still not ended this. Saturday. Saturday. Sunday. I don't know what it is. And there's the final whistle. Liverpool have beaten Brighton 2-1. I uh, don't know whether De Zerbi's done himself any favours for getting the Liverpool job. I mean, pretty much scored an early goal and then sat back. But uh, it's a good win for Liverpool. And um, I'm going to shoot off quickly and just get myself a cup of coffee and a toilet break. Maybe a little bit of a boosty snack. And uh, I will see you over on this channel on the other stream in about five minutes. See you in a minute.